Hi, everyone, and welcome to our June research briefing. I'm Vanessa Weisberg from the Celiac Disease Program at Boston Children's Hospital. And this month, we're talking about a study looking at a drug for celiac disease. It's very exciting to see more drugs being tested, and it hopefully means that in the not too distant future, there will be a viable alternative to the gluten-free diet for the millions of people living with celiac disease. As usual, we have our director of research, Dr. Jocelyn Sylvester, here to answer lots of questions about this trial. So, Dr. Sylvester, the drug being studied in this trial is called TAC-101. Can you tell our listeners who is making this potential medication and how it might help people with celiac? Yes. So this is a medication that's been licensed by Takeda, which is one of the world's big pharmaceutical companies that actually has a lot of products in gastroenterology. And this is a nanoparticle technology. So what they've done is they've made gluten and then they've packaged it in nanoparticles. So can you tell us what a nanoparticle is? Yeah, so nano refers to the size and particle means it's like a bit. So you can think about ping pong balls, but really small ping pong balls. And the outside of the ping pong ball is made out of a sugar that's biodegradable. That's actually the same stuff they use to surface joint replacements. So if you have a knee replacement or a hip replacement, you might actually have this in your body already, um, which is good because it means we know it's safe for people. And then inside the ping pong ball is a bunch of gluten protein. So how do you take a nanoparticle? Is this a pill? Is it an injection, an infusion? How does it get into our bodies? That's a great question. So this particular drug um, is delivered right into the bloodstream. And that's one of the greatest challenges in drug design and delivery is how do you get it, an oral drug, because everybody prefers oral drugs, where you need it. And so this particular drug is injected. And part of the reason why it's injected is because it actually interacts with blood cells is how we think the drug works. So did the trial participants have to eat gluten for this study? Yeah, so this is a drug which the thought behind the drug is that when you inject it, the drug delivers that gluten load inside those nanoparticles to the spleen, and it helps reprogram those T cells, the cells that cause the damage in celiac disease to attack rather than a and so the drug reprograms those T cells, the cells that cause the damage in celiac disease, so that rather than attacking when they see gluten, they tolerate gluten, just like when they see our heart muscle, they don't attack. And so um, the hope with this drug is that if you don't attack your body when you have gluten, then you can have gluten. And now how do you know if a drug can allow you to have gluten? You have to give people with celiac disease gluten. Right. So did the study find that TAC-101 helped people with celiac disease when they ate the gluten? So that's a great question. And you mentioned the very beginning that making drugs is something that there's many steps and it's a long road. And so this particular study wasn't really necessarily designed to figure out if it would help people with celiac disease so much to see, first of all, the phase one was, is it safe? Is there something about this drug that doesn't go well with humans, but it's okay in other animals. Um, and then a smaller trial looking at effects in celiac disease. And so this drug, the endpoint was looking at immune activation, these T cells, these immune cells, um, and it wasn't actually looking at symptoms. So then do, we don't actually know if these people who participated in the study had symptoms after taking the gluten, do we? So what we know is that the people who took the drug, their T cells didn't react as much as the people who didn't get the drug. And that's part of the reason why in these drug trials, some people get the drug and some people don't so that we can see a difference. Um, they also did biopsies in this study. They didn't have enough people to really see if the biopsies would make a difference. But it looked like the people who had the drug didn't have as much damage to their villi as those who um, didn't get the drug. And so they just essentially had a gluten challenge with no drug. So if everything goes according to plan with TAC 101, would it actually allow people with celiac to eat a normal gluten containing diet? Potentially. I think there's a lot of there's a lot more studies and a lot more opportunities to participate in studies to help us figure this out. And I think even if it doesn't work, we're going to learn a lot about celiac disease along the way. So I think What's exciting about this drug is it's not only a first for celiac disease, it's actually a first for autoimmune diseases in general. And so if this type of mechanism is successful, then the same nanoparticle technology could potentially be used for 
multiple sclerosis or other autoimmune diseases and really revolutionize how these diseases are treated. That's very cool to think about. So I think the question that everyone wants an answer to is when. What is next for TAC 101? And if it all goes well, when could we expect to see it in a drugstore near us? That's a great question. Um, I think given that this is an injection drug, it probably will not be in drugstores. It probably will be a prescription drug and not something over the counter. Um, and so what's next? We have to figure out if it, if it works um, and figure out what the effect is on symptoms and what the effect is on the intestine. And so uh, the company is currently in the process of setting up the next phase trial. Um, and we're actually running that trial out of the Beth Israel. Um, so we're hoping in the new year to be recruiting patients to help us figure out if this drug works and may potentially be a life altering drug for celiac disease because it allows people to eat gluten. Are the trials right now just for adults or can kids also participate? Yes, right now the trials are just for adults. Um, so finally, can you tell our listeners about who did this study? It's always nice to know about the team working on these projects, so tell us about them. Yes, so the team that invented this nanoparticle technology is led by Daniel Getz and they're based in Chicago. The team that did the trial is really a lot of the folks who have really done most of the clinical trials in celiac disease, which there hasn't been very many. So we have Dr. Murray from the Mayo Clinic, our own Dr. Kelly here at the Beth Israel, um, and uh, Dr. Leffler, um, who um, is at Takeda, uh, running the project for Takeda. That's so great. Well, thank you. Did I miss so anybody? I don't think so. <laughs> so thank you again, Dr. Sylvester, for taking the time to explain this research to all of our patient families. We really hope that everyone enjoyed this month's research briefing, and we will talk to you again next month.